Hello, Helsinki. I've always wanted to say that, actually. I don't know how many points we'll get for the next Eurovision Song Contest, but please be gentle with us. OK, so we are going to talk about the future of, of VR, but I want to get some hands up in the air. Who's used VR? Ah, oh, fantastic. And, and, yeah, I'll put my hand up as well. And who also has used augmented reality? Yeah, very good. I'm um, not surprised. And who's used mixed reality? Okay, not so many. And anybody out there that's used NR? If I said NR, what the heck? Neural reality, anybody use that? No? Oh, one! Fantastic. I'm not surprised. That's actually <laughs> pretty cool. OK, so we'll be covering that as well. OK, so I've got a range of questions and not a lot of time, probably more questions than I've got time. So I'll try and get these uh, through. And I know I do have a habit of rabbiting, so uh, please, Patty, tell me off if I'm going on too, too long. I think you are. Good morning. Thank you, sweetheart. OK, and uh, everybody, you want to get settled down. If you want to come closer, we do bite, but not very hard. So <laughs> feel free to come closer. OK, I'm going to uh, kick off uh, the first question, which is, where are the biggest opportunities for... This is a tough one, because I'm going to say virtual reality and augmented reality. In a way, it's not fair. We should really split this, shouldn't we, between virtual reality, conference day one, augmented reality, conference day two, but I don't think they've got the stamina for that. So if you mind, if we start with Christina and work our way, what do you think, at the moment, are the biggest opportunities for either or both, VR or AR? Oh, the biggest, it, it, it's super hard because I think that with both, we're still very at the beginning. So we have the technical opportunities to do super cool stuff. I think, as I mentioned before, that we have lots of boundaries in our heads because of what was done before and how, how this should feel and, and, and be like. And I think the truth is something really new. So um, I think that we are at the moment directly on the verge where we can do the step into when it comes to augmented reality to really pull this vision of we, we see when we see science fiction movies. So um, where you look around, everything you see can be recognized and can be, can be labeled and you can get additional information on it. And the cool thing is, and it's all meaningful to me because we have so cool filters and so much ways of tracking people uh, that we can make the experience tailored to you. And this frightens me, and this is also a big opportunity. It's a big opportunity, but the, the privacy issues are, and just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, obviously, uh, one of the biggest opportunities right now is that we can, uh, you know, we can take people and put them in any context that we want. Uh, we can make information available in a way that we haven't been able to do in the past. Uh, there's no reason why you have to live in a specific place to uh, you know, participate in, you know, if it's education or if you are doing you know, a hazardous work or whatever it can be. You can do things that you couldn't do before because you, you know, your, your brain really buys into uh, to, uh, the simulation. And then on the other, other way around, you can actually bring information, you know, virtual information into the actual world and make informa information available where it's needed in a way that we haven't uh, before. So instead of looking at your phone or at your computer, you will have the information right where it's actually needed. So two super good uh, opportunities. And of course, I mean, I mean gaming. Uh, we can entertain people in a completely new way, uh, which is super cool. Yeah, I, that's... Uh you guys hit the nail on the head, and I think creatively, especially, I think commercially, you know, as, as Christina mentioned, we're still very much early days, um, and I would, you know, uh, recommend everybody to, to be patient as, as, the, as the industry grows. Already, I mean, if I take the commercial angle here, already, especially with B2B, uh, we're seeing massive opportunities there um, and, and growth. And especially, you know, you mentioned uh, the sense of presence that you can have virtually, um, not having to be present uh, physically, but, but, you know, in, in terms of like design and, and, and let's say industrial design. And we're, we're seeing, you know, people create uh, platforms and applications which allow them to, to de design uh, very complex complex things uh, from around the world 
And uh, also, you know, just, I mean, I, I often hear the fact that, you know, VR is so, it's so counterintuitive to all the social trends we're seeing because it makes you feel like isolated. But that doesn't have to be the case. I mean, you can you can be uh, fantastically connected in VR. I mean, if you guys have ever tried something called the, the Wave VR, for example, which allows you to participate in you know musical gigs and raves with people from all around the world in fantastic locations. I mean, that if that's not social, if if that's not immersive and has presence, I don't know what is. So I think you don't just on a commercial side, be patient, um, and but but do do look at where the commercial opportunities are. For example, in gaming, I think, you know, there are certain uh, platforms that are performing better than others. There's, you know, uh, the location-based experiences, for example, arcades are doing well. So that gives you an idea that people are very interested in this stuff, uh, but it's still early days. So, you know, it'll take time to to get there. Yeah, that's interesting what you said, though, Harry, about about the the, um, the social side. Um, you've got a theme running across from AR to VR, the idea that data... Uh, Data is seen as, as, as the new kind of uh, power. It's, it's a commodity. It's cash, uh, intelligence, uh, and the ability to access that um, decoupled from our device. And we want to come come on to devices, hardware in a minute. But you, you you've illustrated a point about. Yeah, content is there, but 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 the kind of yeah games, yeah. Uh, but what we can do with information, what we can provide to people, this was a really interesting aspect. I thought you were you were all bringing up is is how what's in it for me? That's always my first question about anything in, in a game. Uh, you know, there's two things: is is it fun? You know, I was talking to some friends a moment ago and uh, they were talking about the business process, the sales opportunity, the curve, uh, dealing with the numbers. And uh, we said, bah, yeah, but is that game, is it fun? And they looked at me and went, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, there, there's that side and there's that what's in it for me. And, if you, and you're talking about empowerment. So I know it's a bit of a worn-out old phrase, empowerment for people, but the idea that you're giving them something, you're improving you're, you're, and democratising, which I really like. Okay, so, food for thought there. But the idea of the technology, uh, where we are now, with augmented reality, uh, it, uh, I think it's, it's, it's jumped ahead of virtual reality in terms of its adoption. Uh, and how the technology's worked. Um, with virtual reality, that's been around since, I hate to say it, and I've been around for most of it, you know, since the uh, late 70s and the 80s. Uh, yes, headsets are lighter, fidelity is, uh, is higher, we're looking at, at more real-time rendering um, uh, effects, and, 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 you know, just the VR experience is, is great, isn't it? I mean, I don't, I, you know, I don't know how, how many different games everybody's played here, but hopefully You've, you've seen a good broad depth of... Um, and I apologise for having my back to you guys over that. It's very rude. I'll step back a little bit. Um, you know, the, the experience is great, but, I mean, I wonder how many of you feel frustrated. Uh, it's so good that you want to do more. In, in a way, it, there's that natural ledge, literally, isn't there, that you want to go... I always want to go and... Uh, I can't get it. I can't grab it. I can't pick it up. OK? So... So let's get your points about what I say is um, headsets suck. Um, and how do we get over that, folks? Take it away, Harry. Um, there's there's a lot of smart people working on that problem, and and I, I you know I, I usually look at this you know you remember what did mobile phones look like in the in the late 80s early 90s like i am born and raised helsinki so we were pretty far along with that stuff but i, I used to be carrying bricks around um you know even to school i was among the early adopters so you know i mean it's it's unrealistic to think that we would have like you know glasses like yours and mine uh in the immediate future um but i'm i'm you know the next step that you people will be super impressed with will be 
the Oculus Santa Cruz coming out next year, which will be six DAW, uh, fully fully wireless, uh, inside out tracking. And once you get rid of the wires, it already opens up another world because even though you know you might not be moving around that much, the, just the fact that you're having a wireless headset is yeah. is something. And you and, and if you go to the AR side, where I think you know we're still sort of you know looking through a phone screen is. You know, it's 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 very very sort of the early early stage of it. Um, you know that we have like, there's going to be really smart people at Apple, for example, looking at really closely about AR headset and and I know like those guys effectively changed you know the UX of of mobile phones. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing you know I'm super excited about the sort of the next generation of headsets. And you know for me it's never been like headsets suck. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's and it's also a logistical thing, right? So, so some of them are so bulky and, and require so much setting up that that you know, once you put it away one time, you probably won't be taking it out. And I think a lot of this is, is already, you know, will be will be solved in the in the next generation of headsets. So I, I'm not concerned about that at all. So you have hardware on 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 one, and as uh, Harry mentioned, you know, it's. It's improving, but it's a long way to go. But it's also from a uh, software perspective and you know, from a user perspective, how you interact with the world, uh, how you uh, behave, how you design experiences that <coughs> really makes a big difference. I mean, with every new kind of platform, with every new kind of uh, wave, what people do is that they port what they already know, and it's not going to be super. No, it's 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 still going to be a big leap. So, uh, what we will see in the coming years is also as developers learn how to make good experiences and overcome uh, you know, the the obstacles that we have now. Uh, it's going to be less frustrating. It's going to be you know more seamless, and the mental image you have, what you wanted to do, and what actually happens in you know VR or AR, uh, is is is, is going to be a better match. Uh, and then of course, you know, there's a lot of uh, no, science going on. Uh, motion sickness is one of the biggest things in in VR. How do we overcome that? And we have all kinds of you know clever and non-clever ways of. Achieving that, uh, but it also uh, research doing you know peripherals that's gonna you know, trick your body and brain even even more uh, to buy into the experience. So again, uh, as as Harry mentioned, it's it's you no know, it's early days. We I, I kind of look at it as uh, when uh, when the web started and we have lots of gray pages with blinking welcome to my homepage yeah. uh, that's where we are rotating today rotating hamsters yes. yeah and then looking you know 20 years ahead where we are today with the web and apps and everything you know yeah. obviously that's going to be yeah and remember we're still basically in the if if you like if you say this is the sort of first generation of commercial um, you know headsets I mean, look at already the leap from DK1, Oculus DK1, to like the Vive Pro right now, mm -hmm. or even you know the Vario prototypes. Not not to talk about them, but it's you know we've already come a, a, a long way, even in a relatively short period of time, and people do tend to forget it. Yes, but also you know just looking. I guess the biggest problem we we have is not so much the headsets themselves. I mean, price is obviously one one thing, but getting people to actually try it on and see what VR and AR actually means. Uh, with flat screen, you look at a picture and you know what it is. With AR and VR, you have to try it. And once you've done that once, and you can kind of understand, wow, this is really mind-blowing and really changing how I look at games or you know, uh, uh, applications, uh, that's when it's going to be a big thing. OK, now, now Christina, I think... Are we uh, hopefully some of you saw Christina's fantastic talk and some of the demonstrations about, about on the augmented reality side. Um, so go for it. You, Thank you. Give it to me. <laughs> okay. I, I think... Um, I'm sorry to say that, but headset sucks. They, 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 they suck. I, I don't like it. I don't like to wear them. They are heavy. I like the immersion which you can generate, but it's... They are expensive. I need to buy it. I, uh, so... That was the beauty when I started with AR. We can just work with the phone. So that is really super. Everyone has a, has a smartphone. Everyone can do it. That's super awesome. But one thing which augmented reality will learn now is actually one big hindrance for people to really wear the headsets is they feel dumb 
because they think other people will look at me while I'm doing crazy things and I cannot see what I'm doing and I don't have the control of my body. Like, like Player One, Ready Player One, where everybody's in the streets with their headsets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly I don't that. want to look like a dick and, as and much as I am already. Lots of these experiences are exposed. So uh, we have in, in, in Berlin, we have one cinema where you can do a really cool VR experience, but it's in the public hall and everyone can watch you play it. And no one is playing that because everyone is frightened how they look. And we will have the exact same same problem with the smartphones and augmented reality, but we didn't realize it yet. Because <laughs> you're standing there in the park with your phone yeah. doing this and, and being really weird and, and moving weird and everyone is just like, okay, what is this crazy woman doing over there? But can't we just make a funky dance out of it instead? Yeah, that, that we could do. Or... <laughs> We could also, and, and this is one thing you also see in, in the augmented reality games, we are trying to reduce the amount where people are standing there and doing this and that. So I think there will be a really neat mixture between really interacting with your phone in the normal way, as you would write an email or yep. WhatsApp or, or something, or really doing this. But I think this is something we have to cover. And this is also something where I'm super excited uh, that we will have glasses at some point, uh, uh, where we will have contact lenses at some point, where we maybe have an implant at some point. So I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about this stuff. But I know this is way in the future and we're doing the pioneer steps, etc. But we need to start somewhere. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like um, the, the birth of automa um, automobiles and flights, how, how long flight took, hundreds of years before flight has become a, a, um, uh, almost a disposable commodity, uh, air travel. Um, and there's obviously economic uh, uh, problems with that. But uh, the idea of the trivialisation of the technology is a tipping point. So with, with a smartphone, you know, in the early days of the mobile phone, this, this is a fantastic place to talk about mobile phones, isn't it? You know, I remember my first mobile phone, it was huge, and I was an IT, IT uh, uh, consultant, and I would be going, hold on, no, I better not move, yes, yes, I can just about hear you, to, to now, you know, I can have a, a conference call with four or five people um, and just have it sat on the table, and I don't really care, I don't give a toss about my phone, really, apart from, well, as you can see, I've broken it, you know, and that's the thing, is that you look at science fiction, that, you know, the, the, the world of the dirty, kind of grubby, you know, there's some great things like The Expanse where they took, have mobile technology. It's just, it's just there, isn't it? It's so embedded. Is that, do you see that happening soon or is that, that kind of trivialisation of the technology? Where Are we early days still? I think this will happen quicker than we, we think. Than there we are think. so many, yeah. Like it. I there there are so answer. many parties working on that. I mean, we all know that this is such a big hindrance. The VR headsets are a hindrance. Uh, augmented reality can only take off really, really fast and, and in a spectacular way when you don't do this. So th this will happen soon. <laughs> so um, that's great for us as developers. I'm not so sure about consumers. So it's, let's, 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 let's all sit over there for a moment and say, what's in it for me as a consumer? Is the journey, is the journey worthwhile? Is it worth me investing in iterative designs that come out? Should I be buying them? Or should I be saying, like we do with, with you know, in the PC hardware days, go, I'll wait till next year for the next version? I mean, again, I... I I think it's 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 going to come to a point where you know uh, the offering from you know a content perspective and the price point on the horror perspective kind of needs where it makes it worthwhile for people. Uh, right now, there's a lot of good uh, things out there. Uh, it might not be worth spending too much money, but the price has already come down uh, quite a bit. Um, so, yes, there are always going to be people that say, well, I'm going to wait for next year. Uh, it also kind of depends on which segment you're in. Uh, if you are into a business, then you know, putting on a headset might not be an issue at all because it allows you to do things that you couldn't do before. Yeah. Whereas if you're going to wear it in public, then, yeah, it's a very big, big deal. Uh, so, I guess... As with everything, it's like you know when the first headset came you know, with uh, your hands-free, 
you look stupid and you know were wondering why people were talking into walls etc and now it's socially acceptable and everyone is wearing headphones or a screen and no one questions that so um, the same with AR and VR you know it it looks awkward now because it's it's new uh, but once people get used to it it's it's going to be fine yeah that, that's a great point i mean if you look at maybe it's only in the streets of helsinki but you do see people walking around like this everywhere so we're not far from you know i think that looks stupider than than wearing a lightweight headset at some point so but i agree with christopher i think i think content will be the key driver here uh, when, when, when there's going to be content that's absolutely a must-have, you know, the, the, the killer app. Um, I think, I think, you know, and it's, it's like Christina was saying, like, uh, you tend to, you know, underestimate how fast things go, and then suddenly, you know, the tipping point has been uh, reached, and then you know everybody's going to want one. Especially, especially today, it happens so so quick. You can't be a you know being a futurist in this age is is a bit is a bit silly, isn't it? Really, because you just can't predict what's going to happen. And and you know with with our parents' generation, the idea of uh, you're going to spend eight hours sat in front of a, a piece of plastic that lights up. It's going to be about six inches from your face, and you're going to be holding this thing. You're going to call a mouse, and it's going to take over the world. I think they're, they're nuts. So. You know, yeah, Christina. Yeah, talking about the killer app, which will all convert us to either AR or VR. I think we are all social creatures. Mm. And I think what we need to really hit off either VR or AR, and personally, I believe stronger in AR because it's more naturally social, mm. is uh, actually neither a game or, or something else. It will be a social network. So it will be a kind of social network which is running, uh, which is using AR, where you can, with my last slide, where you can leave messages for someone just just lying somewhere. You know, someone is going to a bar. You leave a, a virtual, uh, an augmented reality present there and buying him a beer, or you you start communicating in a complete different way. And I think that we need something like that to really pull off the technology. And everyone wants to be a part of it because the whole cities, every city could be crowded with a user-generated content. Mm -hmm. And cities could have multiple time dimensions. We could even have, have uh, an art layer above the world where we don't have to tag in real world anymore, but we can tag virtually on, on walls and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So this will be a neat mixture which will bring us into the technology. So, so essentially the oasis for uh, the, <laughs> like we have in Ready Player One. Now, now here's where here's where there's a divergence, right? Because because if in the sort of the VR utopia, Oasis is the place where you put on a VR headset and and you're you're transformed, and you 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 know you're in fantastic worlds. And then there's the AR utopia where there's like multiple layers to reality, right? So if 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 I'm you know unhappy with the crowd I'm seeing. Let me just press right here, and, and you guys look totally different. I'm like, okay. Or I'm un unhappy with the, with the place we're in, and let me just, you know, change the scenery. Yeah. So I think, I think, but that's going to re... I mean, there we go, get into technicalities of the AR mm -hmm. cloud and, and then things like yeah. that. But it, it's, I, I feel there, the future, there's a divergence, and I, I'm not sure which sort of utopia, or, or is there going to be two? I don't know. Hmm. Well, I think the killer is, is really when you let people do things they couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. So with VR, for instance, you can visit places you could never go you know, physically, and with AR you can bring, you know, again, information and stuff that could never really happen and enrich in the world. And when you do that and it's meaningful enough, then people want to have it. Okay, okay, so the, the idea of, of, of socialness, interconnectedness is, is really important. Um, now, my next question is, because uh, we are in a conference about uh, mobile technology and mobile games, it would be rude not to ask, uh, could mobile actually be the future of VR? Um, I, think, I think it already, it, that's happening because um, the, the Oculus standalone headsets, the Santa Cruz will be powered by mobile technology. Um, so in that sense, I would say yes in the sense that do we need like a piece of plastic as a headset where we put our phones into? I would say no. Uh, 
Yes. <laughs> the short answer. No, but as uh, Harry says, I mean, if we are going for form factors that are, you know, smaller, lighter, uh, longer battery life, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then you know, low power GPUs and CPUs are definitely the way to go. Having said that, you know, uh, with the cloud and with 5G and you know, and lower latency, etc., you could really, you know, offload most of the processing somewhere else. So I believe the future is the combination that you know you will use both uh, to do efforts to drive something that is really, really uh, high fidelity. Yeah, I was talking to Hatch about this at lunchtime, and that was the the the, the thing we were saying. Oh. How does cloud gaming play in the, in the space of AR and VR? And we were saying very quickly, look, that if that can work, that's an incredible liberator. Uh, one of the things uh, that, that I'm interested in as well is how do you think um, VR and AR can be a, a democratizing force? So I mean, actually think about it, there's the political side of that, uh, but also in the social side. I mean, again, when I brought up the uh, example of uh, education, uh, you could, you know, uh, participate and, and take, you know, the best courses on the planet wherever you are. Uh, you could meet with people. Uh, you don't have to fly. You don't. I mean, it really kind of removes the barriers from doing things. So from that perspective, it's definitely uh, something that will uh, make the world smaller. Uh, on the other hand, you know, with information available, you know, it's very vi viable that you will walk around and you will see exactly who everyone is, what kind of diseases they have and how much they make, etc. So it's two sides of the coin. Uh, it will definitely make the world smaller and, and the information more approachable, uh, but it might not always be a good thing. So I was going to... Yeah, I was going to ask about social responsibility. Do we as developers and, and, and as consumers have a social responsibility for making sure that we, we don't overstep the line, we don't invade people's privacy, um, but we have permission between ourselves to share this information, a permission-based economy? Does that sound right? Christine? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, of course we have the social responsibility. I mean, every person on the planet should take the responsibility to not stepping over the line. The only bad thing is that everyone defines the line at, at a specific different point. Points. So, um, yeah, I, I think this is, uh, this, is, this is super important. And it's also something which is super important when you're doing games. So... Um, when when um, when we were we were thinking about our games and our and our technologies, what what was very important for us, uh, from a very personal perspective, is that we are not not building time killers. So so something which sucks you in and uh, eats up all your lifespan and spits you out and you you didn't gain anything. Yeah, exactly. So this is something we really didn't want to do, and we see there a really big opportunity in AR. So, so one, one little example, when we were starting to build up the technology, what happens was we divided the whole world into different colors, and there was a color blue for here's a water space. And directly in front of the office, I was testing the, te the tech, and directly in front of the office, there was a water source. And I was really like, but th there was no river, there was no nothing, and I was so angry because we, we, we worked so hard on that, and there was still a bug, and it was really like, oh my God, I have to storm in. I, I don't know, whatever I have to do, I have to do it. And I didn't like it. And then I just looked around in my craze <laughs> and I was standing directly in front of an ancient water pump. Wow. There was an ancient water pump. I, I walked this street 1,000 times and I never saw it. And then I actually pumped it and there was water pouring out. And it was so amazing. And this, this thing happens to me over and over and over again when I'm engaging with one of our games because there is there's always this disturbance. I look at the map and there's something, hey, okay, wait, look around. Oh my God, I have never seen that before. And, and this, is, this is a beauty, I think. And this is the beauty of AR that I can, I can make you see the real world with new eyes. I can give you information you would have never perceived before and I can get you out of your, your standard days. And this is something I, I really love about so doing what I do. You're talking about hyper-reality, so making the real more real through augmented reality. <laughs> yeah. 
And vir so virtual reality, we, we've, we've said one of the big th criticisms of virtual reality is it's an isolationist thing, and we've already blown that myth. Um, we've already said, no, actually this can enable communities uh, that are disparate to come together. Okay, so next question, and we're about the, the bottom of the hour here. Virtual reality, there's no place for small developers. As a, as a small developer, there's no point you trying to do virtual reality or augmented reality. It's only for the big players, so just go home. Please, Harry, can you give me a, a response to that stupid question? Um, one of the greatest VR games that has been made uh, in the last couple of years is a game called Beat Saber, which is an absolutely fantastic um, combination of, of, you know, physicality, music, rhythm, and, and wonderful visuals. And that's made by a team of three guys in, in the Czech Republic. So I would, I would give that a resounding... That's a lie. Um, definitely, I mean, whenever in, in this, I'm echoing with both Christopher and Christine have said, we are in a new paradigm. Uh, the old rules don't work, and it's usually the smaller teams and the more innovative uh, people who are willing to experiment and to try and, and not be tied to the old rules um, who will do well. So I would definitely say, you know, smaller teams, go for it. Christopher? I mean, in the way that the market looks right now, it's really only small players doing uh, a lot of things. So uh, the big players will come when the market grows, uh, which is a great opportunity for smaller devs to actually go in and do things. I mean, it's a super good opportunity since, you know, the marketplace... I mean, there are a lot of games happening, a lot of uh, experience being made, but there's still uh, a much better chance of actually seeing and, 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 and be seen uh, than if you go uh, and do a, a traditional mobile game, for instance. You know, it's, it's much more crowded. So I would say the majority of VR developers are small studios. I mean, we, we are 12 people, so we're kind of a big studio. Uh, so, yeah, so I would say that it's the opposite right right now yeah 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 we are 12 people as well so we are we're not a big studio uh, however um, when you do when you want to do something like location-based augmented reality apps or context sensitive what I prefer much more uh, there is a lot of base tech to develop if you want to do it from scratch I mean we were happy that we could secure uh, a, a big a big fund for for doing innovative stuff and we have been investing in the technology for a very long time but I think that we are at that interesting point uh, where I explicitly want to see what small developers are doing in this space and what kind of ideas they're coming up with. This was also the reason for us to say that we're opening up our technology for just everyone. So every developer who wants to explore the augmented reality space is welcome to do this um, and they can draw from our base technology because we want to see, um, I mean, we don't have all the ideas of the world and we want to see what is possible and, and, and where it's all leading us. So we're strongly counting on small developers to jump onto that and build their awesome products. See, that's, that's incredibly disruptive uh, and very counter, counter how, um, again, talking about the, the, the indie market, how, uh, and we work in the board games as well, uh, industry, and the, the difference is uh, we, we found historically uh, games developers are very much I can't tell you what I'm doing, but I'm doing something really cool. Not in Finland, though. No, you see, this is the UK, so I don't know what it's like. It's much cooler over here. Whereas in the ball game industry, everybody says, look, hey, this is what we're doing. You know, and, and it's fantastic. Love it. Brilliant. So th that seems to be a very important thing, that the idea that you're very open to the idea of, well, we want to get it out there. We, we're, we are more about getting it into people's lives because we believe in it in its positivity and I have to say personally you know as much as we, we, we work in that we believe in the technology sometimes it's very hard on your own to, to highlight this and, and for me but I've got a lot out of this conversation believe me man that's going to be great for my business cases <laughs> um, so um, but I can see as well from the from the consumer point of view and I'm just of course, I just want to get some questions in because I'm sure people have got lots of questions. Um, but I've got a couple of little questions I want to fire at you. One word is magic leap. You've got to, you've got to turn one sentence only, magic leap. Tried, tried it last Sunday. Was 
positively surprised because I went in with low expectations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, it's 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 not you no know, selling uh, their vision completely, but it's it's definitely showing you know a path of what will happen. Uh, so uh, promising. Promising, like it. Super excited. Super excited. <laughs> that is going to be my take-home phrase. And I'm, I'm, I'm over 40 in English, and, the, and using super in the vernacular, for me, I'm not used to it yet, but thank you very much for that. But no, that explains, I think, as well, it's, it's not superlative in this, in this context, that it is incredibly exciting to both be, uh, you know, somebody using it, but also making it. We're, in, we're, we're pioneers, aren't we? That's pretty cool. So what I want to do is, Patty, can we get some questions now? Yes. Yeah, so, well, OK. So I'll start here. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks for the discussion. Um, I think it's clear that uh, both VR and AR can be used for both entertainment and utility. But how do you see the drivers and emphasis in the future? I mean. Where will the emphasis lie? How much of the future will be in utility and how much of it will be in entertainment? Uh, I think, you know, whenever you have a new technolo technological platform, it's usually driven by entertainment first and people wanting those experiences and, and eventually it will turn into, you know, something that's used professionally. So I come from, you know, the entertainment standpoint more than, than, than the B2B standpoint, so I'm saying entertainment. If I have to choose, I believe that eventually it's going to be you know, more utility. It's going to be for all kinds of things where you know, entertainment is going to be a big chunk. Uh, but I think you know, things like AR is going to be everywhere. It's going to replace so much of the commodity that we have today, you know, screens, whatever. Uh, so that's definitely going to be bigger than, than uh, entertainment only. Uh, I think I think AR will be really big in uh, utilities and everything else. It will be it will be fun in in uh, entertainment as well. But I mean, it is now used to uh, you stand in front of a car and uh, here technicians can can see how it is all built in AR and and, and tinker with stuff. And and there are so many applications where it does make sense. The first customer actually jumping onto our technology before we even released it came from the sports sector. So it's it it will be totally mixed. Yeah, I mean we we our experiences in uh, uh, cultural activities, uh, uh, virtual museums and, and medical as well. So yeah, again I'd I'd, I'd say that as well. And I'd also say about VR because it's a different technology to AR. It can, you can and, and obviously uh, MR, but you know uh, look at film. Uh, is film just for entertainment? <laughs> no, and VR I'd say is the same thing. Yeah. Um, hi guys, thank you so much. Like some really, really insightful stuff there. Um, uh, I'm David Bailey from Fortune Fish. Uh, we're moving into AR and it's super exciting. Um, but what do you think for the long term kind of, do you think AR on mobile, uh, like AR Core, AR Kit, um, how do you guys think of it as a stepping stone to headsets? Uh, is it, will it be possible to leverage kind of mobile AR knowledge? in a profitable way when headsets become a reality because we're trying to convince people to get on board from a money perspective and they're like looking at the long run well is it is it going to be worth you doing stuff on mobile ar if headsets are going to be future so how do you see that mobile ar as a stepping stone to headsets is that a, a profitable way to to look at it well, I'd like to start that off, and I'd say yes. Uh, <laughs> it has. It's been. I mean, we're a small business. Uh, we're a team of five developers, so we're even smaller than these guys. These are big guys compared to us, uh, and it's enabled us to be able to 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 do the things that we needed to, and save, you know, uh, 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 costs for development. It's enabled us to reduce our our time to market, as well. That's really important. Uh, I think eventually, you know, both AR and VR is going to be quite similar. You know, it's, if you turn out the lights with your AR headset, it's going to be v VR. Uh, but I believe, you know, the end game of a of AR when it's you not know, fully uh, immersive, uh, I believe what we do with VR today is you now much closer to what you will be doing. You know, how you interact and how you. Uh, cannot tell the story or how you get people's attention, etc. Uh, but of course, the uh, AR kit and AR core of today is definitely helping you understand, you know, the real world and how to place objects and how to handle occlusion, etc., etc. So it's 
two sides of the same coin, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to say the same. So it's it's super important that we now, uh, with mobile AR, it, I mean, it, it's exactly what we're doing. So the technology we build up is so much backend magic that it doesn't really matter. Is it a phone? Is it a contact lens? Is it, in the end, a glass or whatsoever? So it, it was really important for us to build it up in a way that we target mass market to make as many experiences as possible, but making the technology so versatile that at the end, it doesn't really matter what end device you use. However, we think that this is paramount, that at this moment, we need to figure out what kind of innovation is okay for the user? How can you interact? What does the user understand? I, I could show you pictures of the way we visualized the world at the beginning when we started to do these um, GPS-based, context-sensitive, augmented reality games, and what totally didn't work, but we needed the process to come to the point where we are now. And there are so many things where you don't get people to understand your technology or, or the AR space at all if you never make all the... You have to do trial and error at some point. Well, I'm afraid we've gone into uh, what we would call in football uh, our injury time. In fact, we've had penalties. <laughs> I don't know who's won at the did, end did of that. Did we win? Did we win? I think we've won. I think we've all won. So can we give a really, really big a round of applause to our fantastically awesome panel? <laughs> you have to <laughs> Thank you very much. Christina, Christopher and Harry, thank you so much for coming up. Okay. Thank you.